All right, today on the bench, out of a 2007 Cadillac CTS with a 3.6, we have the 5L40E, rear wheel drive, five speed trains. 115,000 miles on this. And what's going on with this is I got a call. Uh, he came from a good recommendation. And so I spoke to him on the phone and I was asking him what the problem was. He says, you know, the thing ships fine when it's cold, but when it gets hot, the car stops moving. So boom, we're dealing with a clogged filter. Um, he wasn't too far away from me. So he managed, actually, I said, you know, let the car cool down for a little bit. Because at the time, he brought it to me on a Saturday and I had to run out and do my errands. So I said, I'm going to be gone a couple hours and I'll be back. So I says, let the car sit, don't start it or use it, and then I'll call you when I get back. He started up, he drove down here, and just as he was pulling in a lot of her and racing and racing it to get this thing to move into a parking spot. So 100% uh, dealing with a clock filter. We have no codes present in engine or trans. So we're going to take this thing apart and see what we find. Uh, we did have the flusher on it and the screen was pretty dirty. I'm thinking converter failure. I had the pan down on this because, I mean, the fluid was black. You'll probably see some of the fluid. I couldn't get all the fluid out. But the pan really wasn't that bad. So, I mean, we may find some burnt clutches in there from him trying to drive it and it's killing the line pressure because uh, he's racing it up trying to get it to go when it, you know, was slipping real bad. So. I'm sure we'll find some burn clutches in there, but then when the car was cold, I drove it this morning, and the thing worked with no problems. I was actually able to go around the block a few times, then I started to hear the buzz, so I came right back into the shop, we raised it up, and the installer had pulled the transmission out. So what we're gonna do today is we'll uh, drop the pan, we'll take the pan down, maybe we'll pull the valve body out, because I have about 20 minutes before I have to go and then tomorrow morning we'll finish it up pulling the gear train out and this has one of those you know unbelievably heavy snap rings in so let's see how that's gonna come out tomorrow morning but um, you know sometimes if you can I got the huge old pliers that I use on like the 6L80s um, if I can get one one side up I might be able to get around there with a with a screwdriver and, and get the, it'll come out but um, sometimes they don't come out so easy. Uh, all right, so I guess what we'll do is we'll get started taking this thing down. Uh, what I'm going to do when we drop the pan, take the pan to filter out, I'm going to take the two speed sensors out. All right, these uh, harnesses, internal harnesses, are very, very brittle. You touch these things and they're going to break. So I got my heat gun here because we are going to have to disconnect the internal mode switch to get the valve body out and I really don't want to break the connector so we'll heat it up a little bit and see if we can just you know pull it out and pull the whole valve body out uh, with the harness attached to it and then probably at that point we'll just um, continue tomorrow morning with the uh, pulling the pump and the, and the drums and the gear train and stuff like that out all right so let me get a little closer um, we can go over, uh, eh, really not much to go over on the outside. So this is the fill and check. This is on the left side of the trans when it's in the car. And this is a, a torque 40. And most of the time, uh, I'll give you a shot of this. Most of the time these things are screwed up and, and then you can see the chisel marks from somebody taking this out. This was actually in perfect condition, so I'm probably going to put this back, but what I do is when I do like the ZF 6HP uh, 26s or even a 5HP 24, it has the same thread and it doesn't have this T40, which, you know, can easily get ruined because when you're up in the car and you don't have that, that socket all the way in and then you try to loosen it, it just totally screws the, the inside of this up. So. When I have them, I, I normally change them. Um, and here actually is another one that uh, you can put a wrench on, but this one doesn't have that. But I have to look through a couple of boxes. This one I saved. This I think came off uh, 
I don't know, maybe I changed it. I don't remember where I got that one from. But anyway, let me just take this out now so you can see. And it has the rubber seal on it. And that's what it looks like. The Torque 40, if I can find the socket. See, it, it, it fits in here very good. But when you try to get these things out and it's not in all the way, you just kind of round it out. And most of the time you see a chisel mark right there trying to get that out. But that one came out no problem. So, all right, so you know what we'll do? We'll pull the, the back of this off. Um, the pan, which only has two bolts in it, we'll pull the valve body off and then we will uh, continue tomorrow. All right, so let me get a little closer. And we All right, so before we continue with the teardown, this 5L40E, all the pistons are molded pistons, and there is mandatory tools or piston installers that you need or you will never get the pistons in. What's going on is on certain drums, like the center support, and you'll see the uh, overdrive, let's see, the overdrive and the intermediate clutch housing. There's no chamfer to get these molded pistons in, so there's a tool set of like cones, if you will. Now, this whole tool set's probably thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars. Okay, I don't have the tool. I don't really get that many of these to, to, um, you know, for the reason to buy the tool. But Transtar, my supplier, rents the tool out. They have one. So it's a couple of days out, so I have that on the way to me now, and I'll show you that, uh, uh, you know, the piston installers, if you will, um, that we use to get these pistons in. And I just put some trans gel on it, maybe some STP. You put the installers in, and I'm telling you, they go right in, simple. I can have all these pistons installed in about half an hour, because uh, they only let you keep the tool you know, like maybe two days because sometimes there's a waiting list, so you got to get this thing done and out the door to the next person. Uh, also, on this transmission, I update the pressure regulator valve with the Transgo. All right, very common for the pressure regulator valve to wear out. We'll take a look at that when we get the transmission apart. And also, the actuator feed limit valve uh, is also common to wear out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, is this, uh, I've done a few of these recently, and I filmed, you know, the teardown, and, and I'm gonna kinda just make one video, because uh, I filmed me doing the actuator feed limit, we're vacuum testing it, you can see the difference before and after. So I'm gonna kinda get all the footage together and just make one 5L40 video. Um, so I did wanna let you know about the pistons, which I will show you, um, the valve, I'll show you, once I, th this is the new setup uh, for the pressure regulator, and, and basically it, it goes, there's a longer land, so we'll compare the two valves, you know, once I get it out, and then I have an oversized, again, an oversized actuator feed limit valve, because if you have these, when they get hot and they flare on the shifts and stuff, it's pretty common for that valve to wear out. As a standard rebuild procedure, uh, the pressure regulator valve and the oversized actuator feed limit valve all comes in a kit from Transco. All right, so with that, I forgot to mention that. Um, we're going to get back to this. Now we're going to drop the pan, uh, take the pan down, the filter, we'll get the valve body out, and then we will continue tomorrow morning uh, with the rest of the unit. All right, and I have these here, which I use to get the big, heavy snap ring out. And even to put it in, the snap ring's got to go in a certain way. If you do not put it in a certain way with the opening a certain way, it, the valve, it's going to hit the valve body. So a snap ring has to go a certain way, and sometimes, you know, the damn thing is so heavy, you've got to try to maneuver it. And what I do when I'm putting this back together and I, I have everything sub-assembled, you know, the drums and everything, the valve body is done. Once I put the snap ring in, I actually put the valve body up to the case, put a couple of bolts in, and just make sure the snap ring is not gonna hit it. 
Because if it is, you got to reposition the snap ring. And if you do it later and it's hitting, they got to take the whole unit apart. So I always do it before uh, just to make sure. And I'll show you that also once we get the valve body out. All right, so let me get a little closer on the trains and we're going to continue with the teardown. All right, so first we're gonna take the back off, get this out of the way. Actually, what I wanna do first is get this lock out for the internal harness. And this we're just gonna... Come right out of here. Okay, and then this should push in. There we go. Okay, uh, 30 millimeter here. in here also and there is an o-ring in here which seals this area keep these splines from leaking out all right so now let's get to the little extension housing off there that's a 13 Now this thing, which I should have mentioned, um, you need special tools to... Actually, what I'll do is I'll... All right, so, all right, so the tail, we got a shim here, and, and the shim is in the form of a snap ring, but it's basically... A, Okay, and we got the open face bearing here, which should come off. Here, and the race is here. Okay. Yes, kid. it there one second I want to tell you guys about a tool that is needed okay All right, let's flip this thing And the seals are still in it as to the orange seal, so this goes on here, but this filter is totally all matted down. And like I said, when we were flushing this out, it, it was bad. Okay, put this here for now. Got a couple of things going on here. Got some work coming in. I got some cars being towed in tonight. Okay. All right, so we're gonna get this Put her out of the way so we can get to the connector here. All right, so this will just put in. And what I'm gonna do also is take the speed sensors out. This is the input speed sensor, okay? And the output speed sensor. All right, I'll just move the solenoid out of the way, pull that out, and again, we're gonna leave everything connected except for the uh, range switch because that's gonna stay in the case. So I got the, um, the connector out of the case. Okay. All right. Now I gotta get my, I forgot to get my torque socket. Because uh, those are the bolts that are gonna have to come out to get the valve body out. Let me just get that quick and I'll get a little closer onto the valve body as well. So this is the small, small one. So let me get my little adapter. 
gonna put a little extension on it. Okay, and let me see if I can get a little closer onto, sorry for walking in front there, onto this uh, valve body here. Okay, whoops, sorry. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the range switch, okay? And again, these things are very brittle. So any of these you touch, they're gonna break. So I use the heat gun on all of them and they're usually okay. So let's see if we can heat up this connector and get it off without breaking it. size. I think it's a three. Now, let me see if I can, if I, let me just see if I can see the size here so I can let you know what size it is. Oh, it's an eight. Eight. Okay. I'm going to take all of those out. Actually, this there's uh, this is a separate section. This here is the actuator. Let me just uh, bring this down a little bit. All right, so you know what? Want to get these seals out? Want to get these seals out? Okay. Now, let's take a fast look at the valve body. Let me see if I can get this uh, bring this down a little bit. one section of the valve body and this is the actuator feed limit valve here that's going to be uh, done uh, oh, as an oversize I had to rework it from Transco. All right here's another uh, lower uh, rear section of the valve body. All right and then you have the channel plate and then you actually have another channel plate. So there's one, two, three, there's actually four sections to this valve body. And then you have these accumulators. Okay, you got to be very careful not to mix these springs up. The springs may be different, and if you get them mixed up, the transmission may not shift correctly. So keep everything. What I do is when I take this valve body apart, this section will separate from here. So I use my little Dremel. I'll put a one, one, two, two, three, three, four. So everything stays the same and I keep everything together and I do the accumulator one at a time. Alright, so that is the valve body. Alright, so what we'll do also, because I'm going to wash this up in the machine, 
we're gonna take this knock this roll pin out and we're gonna slide the shaft out and uh, take the internal mode switch out too. That was a motorcycle. Alright, so let me actually knock this roll pin out and then we can slide the whole shaft out because uh, this is going to get washed up in a tank anyway so I don't want that switch to get ruined. Where is that? I didn't expect to really do this tonight. I was just going to shoot an intro, but I got done a little earlier than than expected. So I can get it done. And being the fact that it's a little busy here, I'm a little backed up. So okay, I'm going to knock this roll pin out. Stand this thing up. Straight. You know what, let me, um, let me get more closer on top of it. Uh, give okay. me one second. So the opening of the sap ring has to be here, and that's like at maybe the four o'clock, five o'clock position. If it is not, this valve body's never gonna sit right because this accumulator is gonna hit the snap ring. And then you gotta kind of push this thing down to get the valve body to sit right. So that is the reason why the opening has to go there. The other side, the snap ring is there because there's nothing there other than the, uh, the linkage. So, you know, you got no problem there. But the accumulators are on this side. So that second one down is going to hit the snap ring if it is not incorrectly. So that's mainly why once I have the snap ring in, I put the valve body on. Even if, honestly, the valve body isn't done, I'm still going to put it on because I want to make sure it's right. But if you leave that opening there in this position, you got a little bit sticking out here, a little bit sticking out there, and the accumulator's right in the middle, no problem. Alrighty, so we will continue with this teardown tomorrow morning. I'll probably put the pan back on, a couple of bolts, flip it up so we can get the bell housing off, pull the pump out, uh, and then I'll take the pan back down and we'll see if we can get that large snap ring out. So. I'll uh, catch up with you guys tomorrow morning. All right, back with you this morning. So we're going to get this O-ring off for the converted clutch. All right, now we're going to get the bell housing bolts out, and we'll pull off the bell housing. Here. 
right here is the pump gasket, pump bow ring. So here we have the reverse and the direct clutch. And the direct clutch on a five speed, that's going to be applied in fourth. All right, and then we have the forward. Looks like it may be a little burnt. Forward and the coast in this drum. All right, so here is the, this is also a spray here. This is for the forward and coast drum. Uh, for the reverse and uh, direct clutch drum, and just watch your washers. Right, let's get this one out as well. And you got another spray here. And then we have the washers. I get the Trans Tech kit, and these washers actually come in the kit. Let's see how easy that's going to come out. And behind that is the overdrive and intermediate clutches. Uh, let's see how easy this will come out, which usually it's never easy. drivers. this one more time. Not, we'll have to get it with the screwdrivers.
All right. Well, here it is. This the um, bevel faces up. All right. Let's see if this will slide out. All right, so we have the overdrive and intermediate clutch pack here, and intermediate uh, gets applied in third. All right, another spray we're going to take out. All right, now the center support. Let's see how easy that comes out. the uh, special tool on the way. Okay. So I have the low reverse clutch here. Second clutch and second coast. Another sprig here that splines into the second clutch. All right, so let me get um, organized here. We're gonna take apart the pump, take a look at that, and then we'll take a look at the clutch packs. And I guess we can finish it up. All right, so I will be back in a few minutes. All right, so let's take the pump apart. And we got two different size bolts. We got T45 and T27. seeing too too much here uh, from what the problem was so pretty much what more than likely happened is the converter blew. The converter blew or the converter clutch came apart and clogged the screen. I'm not really seeing anything yet that would cause that screen to clog. actually be a T30, my mistake. I don't know where my T30 is. There it is. Yes, okay. Sorry about that folks, it's a T45 and a Torx 30. Let's see if we can get these out now.
bushing is a little scraped up here. Let me just go turn one of my lights back on here. Take a look at the pressure regulator valve. Stopper. Add a little bumper spring and the regulator spring. This is going to be, they're both actually going to be changed. So here is the two valves, and the valve has the longer lane on it, so even if it's worn here, it'll still be able to be used with a worn pump. And then this one, I'll drop right in. like that. Right, that's how that valve stays in there. And then we put just take it back out. Now this is the setup here what it looks like. The new updated one, every one of them gets this. Pushing's not the greatest, so that's going to be changed. I'm going to take the slide out and everything. And then the front seal, we get these two little torques out here. I don't know, maybe like 20. I think they're uh, size 220, and we will knock out the front seal. So 
these frictions also are all one-sided. All right, so on this one, we have the bottom steel, then we have the wave steel, and then we have the external tooth clutch, which is considered the steel. If you look it up on Transtar and the clutches and steels, they have these listed as steels. Now we'll take a look at the direct. All right, they're all going to be changed. Wave steel on the bottom. position here. And what these look like they're going to be not that great. Yeah, these are burnt up. Forwards. Let me make sure you guys can see. Okay. Pretty much gonna take the drum, turn it upside down, and it comes out in this housing. Okay, so and then to put it back in, and then it gets flipped. Okay, so we have a flat steel on the bottom and then a wave steel. then the clutches and steels actually, normally you would put them face up. Like when you stack this up, you'll put these face up with the material facing up. These you put face down because this thing gets flipped like that. So these aren't the, these aren't the greatest either. A little burnt. Okay, put this aside. the overdrive. Has also this apply. Okay. And the intermediate. too bad. All right, so to get this bottom, the intermediate piston, you push down here, and then you get the snap ring out. And then just be careful putting this back. Make sure everything is in place and it gets pressed down evenly. piston is in here. So we'll push this down, get the snap ring out, and then it'll pop up. Right here we have the low reverse. Okay, not too bad. And there's also a wave on the bottom. I'm just going to put these back in here. Second 
second clutch, which of course is on the second. All right, not too bad. And then the second coast. So the second clutch is on, I believe, in, in second through fifth. And the second coast is only on in second. Also has another one of these apply. Apply plates. Okay. Not too bad. But we changed them all. is about it for the teardown of this 5L40E and like I said I'm going to consolidate um, some other footage I have of doing the actuator feed limit valve vacuum testing that and then uh, doing the oversized valve vacuum testing it again but as a standard procedure it'll get the uh, pressure regulator valve in the pump and the actuator fuel in the valve, valve body. And I'm going to do a banner kit, piston kit. I have a tool coming for the piston installers. See, like these here, there's no chamfer. And it, it's, you can't get the pistons in. I mean, I have cones that I bought that I tried, and you can have the spray to freeze it. But um, uh, with these pistons, I can get. With the piston installers, I can get the whole thing done. You just put them in, the front, the, the, the outside one, the inside one. I put grease on it with STP and slide it in. Probably within a half an hour, I got all the pistons installed. I could pack the tool back up and send it back the next day. Because they only allow you to keep it for about two days, so you gotta be ready for it when it gets here. All right, 2007 Cadillac CTS. And we were dealing with a clogged screen. Uh, didn't really see too much inside the transmission that would cause this screen to clog. So it's pretty safe to say that the converter more than likely came apart causing this problem. So I'm just gonna wait for my parts, wait for the tool to get here and I will continue on this once all my parts arrive. All right, so thank you for watching. Have a great day, and we will see you next one.